All right, welcome back to yet another loadout race here. Today, we've got some high-end talent. We've got three veteran racers uh, uh, through Cap, K, Faku, uh, all really high up in the leaderboards, up in the standings here at the start of week four of the hosting league. And then... <laughs> oh, man, I don't even... I don't... This schedule was, like, pre-assigned. Uh, I had a system set up so that uh, amongst 12 different people, they would all be able to see each other at least once over the course of seven weeks. Uh, actually, six weeks. I had to add an extra week because of uh, because of a 16-person uh, a uh, pool, right? Had to have that in there. Needed an extra week to make that one work out. But poor Blubbly here. <laughs> I think we saw this with Disturby last week. Um, one of the bottom uh, seeds being placed up against three veteran uh, Risk of Resources racers. And we see that here again today. You're at the start um, of Distant Roost. And, well, I mean, it's going to be not exactly the fastest loadout, right? We have, is this full-on default command? I think this is. We've got full-on default commando. <laughs> Which is well, not exactly the fastest. You have a roll that sometimes slows you down if you don't have any movement speed items, or specifically if you do have movement speed items, those being um, energy drinks. Right. And, oh, we lost a stream. Hopefully Cheese is paying attention here. Is this Cheese? I forget who did this one. We're down a stream. Do my refs even watch this? <laughs> what are they doing? Okay, okay, now they're back, okay. We're good. Gained cap, he has a brooch. He's killing some beetles. The brooch of Topaz. Is this cheese? I actually forget if this is cheese or if, I think this actually is. Yeah, this is a cheese uh, race. It was originally going to have to be me. I was not looking forward to it. Staying up till 11 at night. Keep in mind, uh, the racers, when they uh, did this race, uh, Blubbly's power went out for a few hours. It just had to get to, had to miss week three, um, which is unfortunate, which is one of the reasons why Blubbly is so low in the standings. Would have maybe not been as low if not for uh, having to miss last week's race. As they find now a second sticky bomb. Hmm. Maybe not the best. I know sticky bombs usually do good on on more burst-based survivors, or if you have a big proc chain, they could be pretty good. There is a predatory instincts though, and a soldier syringe. So that could be some good attack speed later down the line, especially with the predatory of just like if just one crit is found. It's going to be a really big increase in DPS. At least in rate of fire. We see Camp getting... It's an Opal. Doesn't have any healing, but should be fine with a Brooch and an Opal. Right, just has a Stone Titan. It's probably... I oh no, go straight for the Titan. We'll see some of the racers sometimes. Uh, they'll just choose to go after some of the adds. Kill all of them and then deal with the Titan, right? With 90 seconds on the board. Sometimes it's the better uh, option to do. You never know if you're going to get... But it, yeah, I mean, if you get something like a... At least for Stone Titans, right? You can do that. If you have a, a Vagrant, they can sometimes be annoying. If you have a... Oh, God, Blubbly. What happened? I looked away for a little bit. Died to... Oh, I'm assuming a Stone Titan laser. Or Stone Golem, not even Titan. And and Blubbly now to... Well, let's see. Five minutes behind. Does have the double Sticky Bomb, but that's going to be a lot to make up for when you're up against such competition. Finds a Teddy Bear. Yeah. What we know about Blubbly's strategy is go slow early on, and then uh, they, I know they like to, to ramp up later down the line, but once a couple deaths kick in, it's pretty hard to come back in terms of tilt. Right, they're still very much working on, on handling uh, difficult situations. Vagrants, probably number one enemy. Also number one enemy for Vagrants would be K. 
uh, who has described them as being the, in quote, hardest enemy in Risk of Rain 2. So, get out of their Mithrix Zai construct? Pathetic. Nothing. It's all vagrants. And, well, we could see some vagrants here. We have, we've got a family in Sanctuary on stage 2. We've got on stage 4 with Grove. Alright, some chances for that there. We'll see if he can, he can handle them. He can manage. Hardest early game boss enemy? I, I almost want to agree with that. Oh, Blubby, that's an early roll. That's gonna, yep. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta be careful with your rolls. It's Eclipse 3, you'll die. You gotta know your fall damage, trust me. Oh no, and, and, and still haven't even killing the, hasn't even killed the TP boss. Hasn't even started the TP boss. There's, there's a bleed dagger? That's not right. I don't think that was a bleed printer. Does Blubbly have the DLC on? We'll see when Blubbly gets to the next stage. I don't know if, if this was a run. I think I remember hearing something about DLC not being turned on from one of our racers. Uh, if we see like Abandoned Aqueduct or Wetland for Blubbly getting yeah, pretty different items with the Sticky Bombs, that would make sense. Reju Vrak from the the uh, the rusted box. Okay. And lovely with with triple bleed, just a huge advantage. Um, we'll have to be DNF'd if the DLC is turned off because it's a completely different loadout, right? And and while a lot of times the DLC being on is a good thing, right? It can be bad sometimes when. But things like bleed printers for, for commando pop up stage one. But what are our other three racers doing here? Right, we got we still got K, we still got Ka Cap and Faku. Or uh, Faku. And they're all gonna use that rusted box that they found in stage one. They're all gonna get Rejuvrac. Now, Faku's debating for a second whether or not to pick it up. Ultimately decides to do so. And we get to see both a... A, uh, a Neural with the Rejuve. Look how fast the health regen is. I mean, they're getting like two, what, three health per second just off a natural regen with the Neural. That's pretty good. That's like a slug right there. Right, it's a very expensive slug. But it's doing something, right? Most days, you look at your reds or something, you're like, oh, I really don't want to rejuve. I'd rather not have a neural. But they're... They're helping. Look at that. We can see healing orbs to heal for 80. And... Okay. There is an ice ban on stage 2. Interesting. Uh, other things of notice to notice, uh, I'm looking at K's screen. It's a little choppy there. Okay, we're about to find out. And, yep. Just as we suspected. Alright, unfortunately, I, I think I remember hearing something about this, about someone forgetting to turn off the DLC. It wasn't caught in time or something like that. I don't know how <laughs> this wasn't caught. Um, especially so early on. Uh, but we'll see if, if this is going to be caught, if, if Cheese is going to get Lovely to restart the game. But as of now, how's it even turn off by accident? There's some weird thing with the mod, where it just disables DLC sometimes at random. Um, that's with the public version of the, the Gauntlet mod. There is currently no fix to this. But as of now, we're just going to go ahead and pull that away. There we go. Sorry, Blub. Yeah, the way to fix it, if you just go and config it, it gets it fixed up. All right, so we got three racers still remaining. Three racers who did have the DLC turned on. Uh, there's a crowbar printer right next to an ice band. Found in a uh, small damage chest. 
might be able to see something. Ooh, there's crit. Crit on a, a on a cave screen. Wait, 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 wait. Why is there a turf? There's a turf printer. There is a turf printer. There is an ice band. There is a capacitor. What am I looking at? What just happened on cap screen? Turf printer. Ice band. Crowbar printer. Capacitor. All on the same stage. I mean, you, you just go for it, right? You've got to do this. Go heavily into that. I mean... That alone, oh, you might have not even need that many crowbars, right? You don't want to lose speed on commando, let alone default commando. But you don't need the slug with the, oh, maybe, no, nah, not, kind of, I guess. With the rejuve rack, you might need a little bit less defense. Jeez, has anyone else found the, uh, the turf yet? Baku hasn't. Maku's actually going to freeze a little bit as his internet drops. All right, not exactly the most uh, fond of using Discord streaming. Maku asked at the beginning of the league if he could uh, have us do it on Twitch. Unfortunately, not everyone could do it on Twitch. And, well, it's a lot more secure here on Discord. But it has its downsides, a.k.a. epic uh, resource usage. Man, doesn't have the capacitor yet. Nor does K. But K and Faku both do have uh, Will O Wisp, an item that Cap has yet to find. Cap gets an interstellar desk plan. Man, look at these healing re reds. The synergy. The synergy is real. We're all out here thinking about the, the crowbars and the band and the turf. Oh no. <laughs> It's all about the IDP and the rejuve. You kill one enemy, you stand in that healing circle, you are set for life. Oh yeah. And there it is, it's right next to each other. What a shocking discovery K makes at the end of the TP event. As he now has the charge perforator, he now has the capacitor, but K knows about the, uh, the crowbar printer. We'll see if, if K opts to go in for that. Right, my small brain would think to do that with these whites, right? Who needs crit and, and opal and stuff, especially with the IDP. Oh wait, no, K doesn't know about the IDP yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, K does opt to go in. I feel like two would be good, right? You lose a sticky, you lose a uh, uh, that. You want to keep your speed. Yeah, K's gonna stick at two crowbars. That's gonna be really good for phase two against Mythrix. And... Oh. Oh, huge chest right there. Does K choose to open it? He does. And there it is. There's the synergy in a lifetime. Imagine Nukahana's value. Honestly, Nukahana's in like a TP event with this would actually do pretty good damage. I'm not even gonna lie. We see K making it to stage 3 a little bit behind Cap. Cap, the first one to find that combo. Faku still really kind of struggling with this boss. Right, 164, 184 curse, well under half health. Had to charge the TP to 99% before killing the Douche Rider. Let's finish it off, though. Gets a second brooch. Gets the Harvester Scythe, and... I mean... How have you not found the turf printer? The turf printer's right there. <laughs> okay, when, when Faku uses this vent, there's a 100% chance that he's going to, uh, to find it and pick it up. Right, it's gonna go up. He's looking at the time, not happy with the time, not able to get prey on, right? And turf printer, turf printer, there it is. Equipment, boom, just enough money. Turf printer, you... Huh? You you have a you have a you, you got a a neural Faku. Well, you see, Faku understands the true power of Nukaha of of, of Rejuvrak with Titanic neural. I mean, what is that? You get one point six three point two health. 
divided by two. Look at the health regen. Look at that. One, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, sixty. One, two, boom, 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 boom. That is insane value with the healing. And Faku understands that. Charge Perforator, you don't want to leave your run up to RNG. You don't want to leave it up to, to sheer chance. He knows what he's doing. This is this is a powerful play. Right, while the other racers are getting getting rose bucklers. I mean, maybe, you know, maybe it's down on Faku for not knowing there's a Rose Buckler, but he, he's got to find a way to be able to outheal the other racers. And the other racers have the advantage of having this the Interstellar Desk Plant. He doesn't have that. Wow. <laughs> Alright, he's going to have to have some, some inverse luck or something like that, because... I don't know, that's just a huge amount of damage that you're missing out on, if you're Faku. Oh no. <laughs> He's holding out for the Nukahana? He can't even, though. I don't- I think it's just normal regen, right? With the, uh, the Neural? Oh wait, no, it gives plus 40 health, though. Okay, you are right. Plus 40 health means your healing skulls do more damage. He's got it down. And, and Cap, speaking of having it down, is already going on to stage 4. K, meanwhile, on an adaptive chest. Sees an ATG, picks up an ATG. Holy proc chain. Guess what Cap just missed? Cap, with a slight advantage on time, going to hit the newt. K sees an egg debate, so do you want it? Do you really want to give up your capacitor with double crowbar? That's what you went in for, you printed it off. There could be, oh, a sticky bomb as well. Sticky bomb, ATG, turf. That's a skip with roll, that is indeed a skip with roll. K makes a good point, that was a full on skip. No fuel cell required, but it's all right. There is a void seat here at stage three. Or stage four, my bad. K could perhaps clear this seed, find us safer spaces, and be okay. Baku, meanwhile, using the power of plus 40 HP, right? More health getting multiplied by that personal shield generator that he picked up. It's exponential value by holding onto that neural. Quadratic, maybe. Maybe not quite exponential. But good value nonetheless. As uh now Faku is is still very healthy. Fighting this worm. A little bit behind in real time, but can make up that time. I'll be fine. Oh, there's a fire band. Fire band on stage four that K finds, that Cap finds. Both are mostly recent item. He still has five enemies to go on this TP, or on the Void Seed before, before uh, being able to clear that. Wandering Vagrant, uh-oh. Uh-oh, Wandering Vagrant is the boss. Now, K did print two crowbars, and I don't know if that was a crit on top or, or what, but it one-shots the, uh, the Vagrant, the first one of two. Cap, meanwhile, having to hide behind the Nova, dealing with the Golem. Kills the golem, gets a couple turf procs, boom, that's minus one vagrant. The K with another lightning. Did not have crowbar damage on that strike. There's another yellow item. Oh, K gets knocked off, but does have roll ready. Uses it a little you know, no, just fine. I always forget if you it's the fog. Oh gup. Gup scare for K. Oh jeez. K gets a little little spooked there by those gup. To be okay. Oh, man. Could you imagine if K went with the egg and somehow was able to pull off a few gloops against Bethrix? Maybe you get one gloop off on phase three? I mean, you could still do the gloop phase three. Hmm. Or phase two, my bad. Phase two gloop is actually really powerful if you can pull it off and not die. If you have a gloop and a, and a Dio's best friend, personally, I would try to go for it. Really curious about Kay's uh, decision to keep Capacitor when he has Turf. Uh, it's just more damage, right? That Turf isn't really going to be the thing that's going to be proccing those crowbars. Kay did print off two crowbars, kind of has this huge damage build. 
already with this capacitor, right? And there's still, you know, stage five, there's still stage four. Maybe regrets it later down the line. A single egg though for a skip, egg skip is slow. And if you just have really, really good damage and you get good luck with your, uh, your void seed, you can, okay, there's Wungus. Oh, please, I want there to be a Nukahana's opinion. Baku's gonna find a Wungus potentially, double Wungus. Oh, geez, double Wungus. And there's a small chest. Oh, geez, the true value of that void seed is a brilliant behemoth and a 1% chest. Oh, geez. And K knows, K knows it's go time. Ah, uh, I mean, with just such huge damage power. The egg was a skip. Mm, I feel like capacitor is the right call if there's only like blood shrines and, and uh, mass shrines. But if the, I mean, if there was two design pillars, I think this is fine. If there's just a couple like soul pillars, soul pillars are probably going to be pretty easy with this match damage for K. Haku finally getting to the adaptive chest. We'll see what it goes for. Gets a gasoline, misses out on the ATG. Unfortunate. I think just one or two rolls away from that. Faku does have two Will-O-Wisp, though. I don't think any of the other racers have that. Cap doesn't have any. All right, Faku going to be able to proceed to stage four. Is one whole stage behind after just really struggling on stage two TP. Uh, K found a Pluripotent Larva. Don't want to die with that now. Right? If Faku dies with Pl Pluripotent in hand, not the end of the world. Right? Not going to lose a Charge Perforator. Just going to lose a Neural. We see one lightning from Cap. Just about kills the Souls Control unit. Gonna have to look out for the uh, the slow circle that's about to start popping up. Does have some movement speed to outrun that. K meanwhile uses his lightning. Should be able to get a one shot? No, it does not. Does not get any procs. Get some there though. Just from the M1, just from the M2. Just from a few abilities, able to annihilate some of these enemies here in this TP. Has Giga Healing with the Wungus. Has some armor with the Rose Buckler. Oh my god. I mean, how much healing is that? This is probably the most healing we've ever seen in a run. <laughs> and in the hosting league here. Wow. There's even a Harvester Scythe. With some crit. There's a Shuriken. That's going to be great for Case Proc Chain. I mean, look at Case Proc J, two ATGs. Has a Behemoth. Cap found the Behemoth too, thankfully, along with the Lungus. Uh, but Cap without any of the ATGs, right? If K gets really, really bad luck during the Mythrix fight, Cap could have a chance to, to overtake K, assuming they both take similar routes, similar paths. But, I mean, just two ATGs. It's going to be hard to beat. Why do they have a turf? All right, Faku, I want you to watch this one back. Either watch it in the VOD or watch it uh, uh, when it comes out on YouTube. But just look at your items and look back to the end of stage two for you. Ooh, Feather found for K. Cap still kind of dealing with these enemies. Again, with such a less proc chain, right? Doesn't have either ATG. Doesn't have the, uh, uh Orbitant Larva. I don't know if that would be a good or bad. I mean, it's got to be a good pickup. You just can't die in a loadout like this. If you die, at least with Pluripotent, you're not losing watches. Yes, you're losing your band, you're losing your turf. But there's still a chance that Cap is taking a lot of damage here, just really getting harassed by these enemies. Oh man, the AoE damage just isn't there for Cap right now. A huge proc chain would solve most of that. Roach does kick in a little bit. Kate picking up a rusted box at spawn. Gets a harpoon. Sadly does not have the FMP from stage 2. Right went for the capacitor. It will not be able to speed up and save 3 seconds by throwing it down. Unfortunate. <laughs> Unfortunate misplay. Oh jeez. 
Oh, K is at three ATGs now. Wow. I don't even know what that one's at. Must be near TP. K didn't travel very far after finishing up the charge. In camp, just trying to find some room, trying to find some areas to, to get some charge in these elders. The elder shotguns I've noticed have been hitting ca uh, camp more than anything else. There goes a lightning strike. Oh, look out for that mending or overloading bell. Uh, news flash update for Faku. There's an ice band. There's a fire band now in play. There's some larva. Really scary. Does have the gasoline though. Cap got a feather. Didn't die from that hammer, uh, parent slam because of opal. Double opal. Cap found a guillotine printer. Can now pretend like he's in a uh, Raymond Daniels. What if every item was guillotine video? Chooses not to. Gets a bleed. Gets hand. Oh. Oh, careful, Cap. Gets forced to vent by a parent and is going to leave. Cap did not find any of those ATGs. I'm assuming that large chest right behind him is probably going to be it. K has a soul pillar he can do. Which, again, I think this is going to be easier with three ATGs, a brilliant behemoth, a feather. All these items here, right, in only 25 minutes real time. I think K made the right choice keeping the capacitor. It's going to be a lot easier to, to take out these enemies. And again, think about how much time it would take for you to skip with one egg on Commando. You have to do like three or four iterations of egg. You have to run up and, and get all ready for that. And, uh, I think this is honestly going to be faster. Charging these pillars. The kid can just boom, there we go. Look at that damage. Look at him go. Exploders. Oh. Oh god, I hate him. I hate these moments. Ooh. Epic stun grenade usage. His least favorite item, by the way, is stun grenade. But for about half a second there, maybe not. Finishes off the one soul pillar. Oh, don't tell me there's only one. There is. Oh, man. K has to do another pillar now. Does have plenty of armor. Can do blood really easily with this capacitor, right? Capacitor with blood. We'll see if there's any enemies behind. Baku almost done with the TP, by the way. 95-96% that neural value. Again, really kicking in. Finishes off the TP. Oh, careful with that vent. Sometimes you use that vent and you just get locked in the death. Not today, though. I've had times where I use that vent and then I jump through it and I get three larva just waiting for me. <laughs> and I'm just locked in momentum going toward three larva. Never a fun experience. Cap, by the way, also going for the same strat, going for the soul pillar. We'll then go for the blood pillar, the same blood pillar that uh, K just finished off. The Cap's build, again, is so much weaker. The only thing I can see as an advantage for Cap is one bleed dagger, which might give a little bit of value on occasion. And... has two opal instead of one, right? So K could accidentally die a lot easier. Oh, jeez, it's a lot of golems. There's a perfected golem in Cap's screen inside the soul pillars, trying to hide, using the healing drones. Healing drones make a really good diversion uh, for doing pillars if you just don't provoke enemies and just let them do all the attacking on them. And the sad part is, is whenever they redirect onto you, you're just pretty screwed, but can't plan it smart. Goes for the pacifist route. There we go, that's one pillar down. Has to do another, though. In terms of real time, Faku, Cap, and K are all just about on par with one another. Faku may be the furthest behind by about three seconds. Faku with with the the first Wungus really experiencing the value, right? Wungus is a percentage-based heal, and with 40 extra hit points from having that Neural is getting slightly more health per tick. K already half, more than halfway done with phase one. I mean, this is just a god run for Commando. Wow. I'm 
Just look at that damage. Maybe about one or two more iterations of Mythrix going back to center. We'll see if this band or nothing gets proc'd. I think maybe an ATG got proc'd. No, that was just from M1. Faku found a bleed dagger on stage four. I hope Faku picks up that small chest next to these. Go to the left, go to the left. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Get that. Hmm. Behemoth. Love to see it. And K is going to have probably one of the easiest phase twos I've, I've ever seen on a commando run. Oh, misses lightning. That's unfortunate. But the good news is, is as long as you get one turf proc, they just instantly die. <laughs> oh, I don't know if that was a chirp off of, of crowbar, but that one in the, in the way back, K just misses the uh, the capacitor shot, was a little uh, too greedy with it. But one turf proc just instantly annihilated. I don't know if I wanted a sticky bomb. And... Under the course of a minute, maybe only 40 seconds, 35 seconds. Someone count that for me if, if you if you really want to. But K's already on phase three. Meanwhile, poor Cap, ATG list is just beginning the fight. All right, had a little bit of a struggle during um, during stage five TP. Three AT, two ATGs do a lot though. <laughs> When you're in there. Poor Cap also doesn't have the uh, Pluripotent Larva. If Cap dies, uh, he's dead, right? Has some wings. K gets an extra life, so K needs to die twice for Cap to have any shot, to have any chance of winning this loadout. It's gonna have to come out down to probably the next pizza. We're gonna have to see a double pizza plus five. Or maybe like a hammer swing from right behind. I don't know. But it's gonna have to be now. Here we go. Mythrix is coming down. Is walking up. I mean, there's just no ads. K can just stand still, pretty much. And... I, mean, I don't know if he's going to go for phase 4 skip. Looks like he is. This cap is finishing up phase 1. Faku, by the way, on stage 5, finds an ATG. Not bad. A huge damage upgrade. Right, Faku, who didn't have the uh, capacitor, or does have capacitor, but didn't have the turf all run. Uh, finally gets the behemoth and the ATG, and, and while we're talking about that, K did not die during the, the fight. Says meh, because K only ever says meh. There's not all, there's, it is impossible to have a good run if you're a speedrunner. <laughs> But K is going to run over to the ship, and I mean, unless there's a double grub, K is going to get in first place. GG's to K. K has been looking forward to this fight for a while, right? Only had a 1v1 in week 3. I was kind of disappointed, right? Not as much potential for, for actual points, because there's not as many points handed out in week 3. Uh, actually sent me a message, uh, a little bit upset over the situation. I told him, just, just win week 4, and none of that's even going to matter to you. Well, so far it's looking good. I mean, Cap can easily deny bonus points here. In such a god run for Commando. For default Mander, by the way. A default Commando run that really isn't using any DLC items. Right, what DLC items were really big this run? I guess Wungus and the Larva that never got used. And then there's Opal. But this is just a classic god run. Classic, classic OG Giga run for an OG loadout. Whew. GG's. How's Faku doing, by the way? So you got the uh, the stage done. Stayed inside the TP charge, right? Built up a little bit more than, than what Cap had. Has a little bit more enemies to deal with, right? More director credits are being pumped up into the director per second. So it's able to spend a lot more, do a lot more. A lot more elite wisps and stuff will be spawning for, for Faku. But, I mean, when you have ATG, when you have a feather, it's just going to be so much easier to, to charge TP. K finishes up and gets a 3257. GG to K. So that means 37... Or not 27. 3757 will be the time to deny bonus. And uh, while you were... Not looking, by the way. Uh, again, <laughs> I don't know what Jesus is looking at on stage two, but poor Bubbly here made it to stage five. 
Uh, I was just ra racing this whole time, having a completely different loadout. Uh, unfortunately, even with the bleed daggers and other stuff, right, didn't have the charge perforator printer on stage two, among other things, and had to concede, which I guess doesn't really change too much. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and and uh, continue. Oops. Right here by bringing on. Let's see, I need this screen and this screen. There we go. There we go. Run continues. Cap's on phase three has plenty of time. As long as Cap does not die, my presumption is that he will finish the loadout. He will place in second place. And it will be up to Faku to uh, not giga screw this up and get, be able to manage to get third place. Faku done with the TP on stage five, right? Really? I mean, hmm. I would say the command, the Mythrix fight will take about nine minutes, a nine minute stage six if you play it well. It's about as long as it took for, for K, maybe a little bit longer for you because you don't have a charge perforator. Um, but if Cap dies, okay, it can't even be a curse if I didn't even say it yet. Cap gets a death and suddenly, the time to deny bonus points is now a time to deny double bonus as Mythrix gets a full-on hammer. As Cap just eats that shot, again, didn't have the pluripotent larva. And now, oh man, I mean, at least on the bright side, still doing just as much damage as before. But oh, look out! He's glooping! Good gloop. Takes care of all the ads. Clears the field, but still has Mythrix running around. Right, again, Cap has a Feather, but it's just a Feather and the Double Opal. The Double Opal and Feather not able to save him. As as Pizza begins again, and and let me go ahead and, and just... Change that to, to, to a denial of double bonus. I didn't think there would be any bonus points this loadout. As 42.57 is the time to do it. We'll see if, if, if Cap can pull it off. He should be able to with a Capacitor. Uh, some early items. Doesn't really get any damage items early on, on uh, back. Right? Just saving the capacitor, but I almost feel like you want to use it early so that way you can just get Mythrix to, to start slamming himself to maybe get some more items back. Now Cap's going to go ahead and wait to get, get crowbars. Wait to get, or not crowbar, uh, bams. And ends up taking like 30 seconds to side screw it. This is taking too long. Gets hit. Mid. Oh my god, just so many shots. Thankfully did not get charged perforated or sticky bombed or anything like that. Nothing really else can happen to Cap, but this bleed is lasting forever. Jeez. Mythrix with uh, with Behemoth can be kind of scary sometimes up close, and, and thankfully Cap does not take a second death. Um, despite being close to it, it's going to be able to finish off, and I mean... Is there a good portal? Yes, there is a good portal, but Cap's going to have to act fast. 41-42 does get about 20 seconds of load time removed at the end of the run. So it's going to be close. I don't know. Gets hit by a, by a, a wall. And we'll see. That was a pretty lengthy uh, phase four. Kept going for the, uh, the vent tech, right? Gets that little speed boost. Or is it? Okay. Here we go. Can do that with roll. It's gonna get in. Oh, jeez, that's so close. I don't know. I think K might just by a couple seconds get double bonus here. Unless Faku over here charging the pillars. He does have the polar potent, does have double ATG. Uh, it's gonna have to have a really fast run deathless. I highly doubt he's able to be able to pull out a one-minute Mythrix fight, right? Still has both pillars to charge. Oh, man. Jeez, how did you miss the wetland aspect? <laughs> oh, man. That was like a... That was an obvious one. Uh, 
Yeah, I... I want to say K is going to get both bonus points. We'll see. It's literally on the second. Right, if that capacitor was maybe used a little bit earlier. He thinks, yeah, 4302. Oh, damn. I mean, we'll leave it up there for the, the sake of, of technicality. Baku might be able to pull something off. Uh, 4302 was the time that cap completed. So as of now, K does get double bonus points by a mere five seconds. Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. <laughs> and, and with Faku here, coming in at 4907. 3907, not 4907. Finish us off both pillars will clearly, with the power of the Titanic Neural, be able to have a a one-minute Mithrix fight and will be able to immediately get onto the ship. We all know what's coming. Didn't manage to stay for any of the races I repped. Uh, where the proportion's good. So there's this weird thing, Mayan, where... And, and, and you'll hear it in some of my most recent uploads on YouTube. Your... Is there a way to get rid of that tiny bar on the top? It's like 20 pixels because of Mac. Okay, here comes Faku. The start of phase one. Has got to do this and... I mean, if you're Faku, you gotta be on the ship by, like, 42 minutes and 15 seconds? <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna be doable. Should be able to turn off that bar? Okay. Yeah, if you could turn off that bar, that would save me a lot. I'd appreciate it. Thank you, by the way, for doing all the repping. I appreciate you. Get back in there. Baku, by the way, at 41 minutes now. Uh, yeah, it's not going to be doable. Neither is uh, second place going to be achievable for Faku. Right? Just again, missed out on the turf. Took a while to do stage four and clear it. As a result, took a while to do stage three. Um, but already had a really long stage two, even even before act, uh, missing out on the turf. Right, Fox, or uh, K didn't get it until after TP. And, and still was able to come back. Just a few chain uh, reaction events kicked in. And... Uh, uh, Brought Faku really far behind. Faku, though, deathless. Right. At the very least, going to be able to finish off with a pretty decent time for Commando here. At least so far. Now, hold up. If you're Faku, and you have this Polaritan, you have this extra life, if you really want to go fast, I mean... It's just an idea. You lose your Ice Band, you lose your Phase 4 skip with the Fire Band. But you could, maybe, uh, you know, loop it up a little bit, maybe save some time on phase two. Got those ATGs. Got that sticky bomb. Could Something could happen. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, could maybe save a little time. Regardless, though, Fonk is going to be able to finish out Phase 2. It's going to be able to get to Phase 3. A really fast fight, right? And officially, it's going to be out of time to deny double bonus unless he can find a way to charge the ship in, according, in about two seconds. Right? Oh, it's Breach. That's for good. Breach is the ref right now. My bad. You're doing the one tonight. <laughs> uh, let's see. Time to complete. 
7257, time to finish. By time to complete, I mean time to kill phase 4 metrics. Which Paku is doing a very good job at right now, I highly doubt that it's gonna happen. If Paku manages to, to somehow take 30 minutes to, to do two pizzas while holding M1, looking at metrics, I'll be shocked. Ooh, how smart. Even getting some firework damage in there. Right, a lot of people don't realize it, but, I mean, if you've got the money, there's some drones just sitting down the ground. Fireworks got some use during the metrics fight, even if you don't have a capacitor. Right? The drones... Those gunner drones that you get on stage one, they're maybe not super valuable early on. I mean, they're distractions, which are really good. They start out as distractions, and eventually, when you get to Mythrix fight, they're just these devices that distract, and when they die, you can bring them back. You get some DPS out of them in the form of uh, fireworks. You can get DPS out of them in the form of, of squid polyps for phase four. My drones serve a lot of, of utility roles. And, oh, jeez, where did Mythrix go? There's Mythrix. We found him. Baku going back, and phase four skip, nice. Even gets the firework in there. He's got the behemoth, Mithrix is getting wrecked, and Mithrix is dead. Nice. Hold on. GG, Baku. We'll be able to finish this run no matter what. I uh, will start handing out points now. So we see Cap coming in second place gets two points. Uh, K coming in first place and just by a few seconds getting both bonus points. Uh, Faku, oh, right. I don't know if he's messing around with the pluripotent larva or something. <laughs> there you go. I, you notice his landings. He's messing with us. It's going to get onto the ship and it's going to be a sub-47 run. Not too bad for default commando. How to uh, skip fourth phase? If you have any sort of damaging source in the center of the arena, where Mythrix will uh, teleport into at the start of phase four, before the uh, the boss health can be assigned to Mythrix, right? With any enemy that spawns in, um, there's like an order of things that happen, like a procedure, an algorithm that kicks in, and like the sixth or seventh step with an enemy is it gets assigned boss health, it gets assigned status of boss. And you can interrupt that if you deal damage uh, during that algorithm. And if that happens, then, uh, uh, or a series of steps, not really an algorithm, uh, then the red boss health is never really applied. Oh, wait, I'm, th I'm talking about boss skipping. Um, I guess phase four skipping is even easier because you just have to do it before he gets the invincibility tag. And if you interrupt him before he gets the invincibility tag, he never gets it. So yeah, Fire Band in the center is the easiest one to do. Uh, but there's some other things. You can use like a phase round for Commando, Multis, uh, Transport Mode, Acrid's Puddle from uh, uh, Caustic Leap, etc, etc. There's a lot of different things you can do for it. Uh, GG, by the way, Faku coming at a... What is that? I think it's a 4602? 4632? I'll... You know what? Since it's not important, I'll just worry about it after the stream when I usually have to do stat stuff. We'll enhance it. <laughs> uh, gee. GG Faku. Yeah, if Cap manages to get both bonus points, though, there will be a guaranteed bonus round. And what better of a run to be able to have a good chance. To have a good chance for a comeback race. What better than to have Blight Acrid, Blight Acrid, which is going to be loadout number two for these racers here. And, oh, there we go. Lovely's back in this, has the DLC enabled this time. Everything's ready. Everything's going to be good to go. And we begin. Are there beetles? Any blazing beetles? Last time Cap played Acrid, there was one. Nope, not this time. Very bright acrids. All different shades of pink and, and white. Very beautiful. 
I like uh, K's the most. Really blending in with the snow there. Like, if you were gonna have a skin, like the, the albino skin at least, give it, um, you know, a cool look. Instead of it being, like, deeply sick and, and in need of, of, of pure help. A K is shining. Shining with with Blight Acrid as loadout number two. By the way, by the way, I don't have the loadout card ready. My bad. This is not Commando. This is Blight Acrid with Blight. Blight and Blight. Um, which uh, I would personally say this is my least favorite loadout on Acrid. Right, Caustic, or, uh, Caustic Leap is good for Blight, right, because you can at least move around. Um, you know, some people like to say, well, I like to play Melee Acrid, so when I play Melee Acrid, I get, uh, I get wings, okay. Baku getting wings, K with wings, Cap with wings, you can't see Cap's wings. Uh, uh, Bloodly gets wings, but not the kind of wings that you want. Instead, is running in a straight line against some, some blind pets. You want to be running in a circle. Want to use your Epidemic where you can. Already at 2 plus 5s. Lovely, who, whose DLC wasn't enabled in the first loadout. Lovely, who had a power line go out. And just really, really good. Or really bad. No, nothing good happening for Lovely today. Oh, man. I'll put on the, uh, the same gamble again. Uh, who wins Acrid? Could be there could be a comeback for Bloodly. You never know. This is Blight Acrid. Bloodly just also taking a little bit of a breather at the start of this loadout. With the double death. And baits a timeout. Alright, what's going on? Zip, do you go all in? It's up to you. I probably wouldn't. There's, there's more enemies just murdering Blubbly right now. <laughs> as as they're, they're changing some more stuff around when testing them. Uh, I mean, you could, you, you gotta try harder than that. Well, we already with a, a horde of like seven pests with like eight wisps. Okay, dealing with the vagrant, doing a strategy that I like to do personally. Oh god, and can also die a lot with personally. That's a death for K. K's least favorite enemy is vagrants. Is typing is something in chat, but his resolution so bad in stream that I can't even see. That's why something sucks. Pausing sucks. I don't know. It's, it's mad about the the timeout. And, I mean, racers are encouraged to get in a good position before uh, the timeout happens. They don't have to immediately pause. They can they can wait for something. Uh, so, you know, on K's end, if you're in the middle of fighting something, you can go ahead, finish it off, then pause. But with every racer finishing off the TP... Uh, Faku and, and K just struggling a little bit here. Cap finished it off with a Prayon Accumulator. Did not find the, the wings quite yet. Prayon not bad for Blight for, uh, for Acrid. Acrid, who already has a built-in pillar skip. Has the, the Prayon, has ATG, and gets double Deathmark from the boss. Deathmark, the guaranteed boss item. Are these recorded or live? These are recorded. Uh, but they have yet to be seen. Globally has seven deaths. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. And as if... He, as if those, those three deaths during the... The uh, timeout weren't bad enough. This without an elixir. Does have a harvester scythe. Decides that... Time to bite the bullet, time to start TP. Hopefully things may maybe turn around for Blubbly. K already at a death. K 
Kay the one in first place with the death. And Kay's Okay, I thought he I thought Kay was gonna be done with the TP and gonna leave. Just with how white the uh the skin is, you can't really it looks like uh the TP charge, right? Oh jeez, was that a level up? Was that a level up for Faku? Faku, who also gets a plus five against these vagrants. Now both with the death. And Blubbly suddenly, I mean, well, that's not helpful. Now at nine deaths on stage one. Gotta love Blight Akron. Welcome to the hosting league. <laughs> if you want to go for these, I mean, take it from me. I used to, to speed run Akron. First off, Vagrants were my least favorite enemy, period. And another timeout's called. Kay's gonna wait a little bit, right? All right, air horn is played. Everyone can resume. But Kay doesn't want to resume. All right, now he does. And Cap, remember, Cap is the only racer who... Or not the only racer, but is the only racer right here as he picks up quote-unquote for stake without a death. And Cap is the one who's, I would say, the favorite to be able to upset the uh, the K sweep, right? If there's going to be any chance of tiebreaker, Cap can't, or has full control. Hmm, would I say full control? I mean, K needs to get, I would say, in second place. It would still be fine. If K gets in third, though, right? Because Cap is in good position to be able to get one bonus point, maybe two. We'll see. Cap already scrapping some stuff. Did find a crowbar, has an ATG. Uh, kept the elixir. Blubbly just getting wrecked by by these pests, by these wisps. Does finish off the TP at 12 deaths for stage one. Chat, if you're ever having a bad day, just know that um you could always be Blubbly. Could always be worse. Because poor Blubbly just, I mean, ugh. No power into three timeouts. I don't know what this timeout's about. We'll use this time. Hope you're doing good, by the way, uh, Lemu. Hope the uh, hosting league so far has been good. Haven't been able to catch too uh, too many, unfortunately. Uh, it's been busy, but it's been a lot of fun. I've really been enjoying it. And Goji, coming in with the Prime, thank you so much. I don't know why nothing popped up for that. It should. I don't know what's up with my Streamlabs. Maybe it's, like, really behind? Did the noise happen? I hope it did. Got it, like, on the front scene and everything. The stream has ended. What? What is going on? Someone DC'd? Who, d who DC'd? Oh, it was K. Only on my loadouts, uh, Cheese says, by the way. Doing well for sure, lost my win streak because I spawned inside terrain and hosted on Mirth, but we're back at it again, uh, playing some Rogue Legacy 2. Hosted on spawn. Ugh. Spawning inside terrain, that's... That's actually, I almost want to say grubbing. That was a grub thing before anything else. Okay, there's so much that I'm gonna have to cut out from this race. Oh my god. <laughs> Are we all good? Is Kay's internet fine again? Or not fine, but stream? I will take the, the higher stream quality any day. In case you're, uh... In case you were wondering, by the way, we have, uh, cut videos, or cut streams, of every loadout race where it gets rid of all the pausing and all the, the weird stuff and just you get the, the smooth race, the smooth experience, or at least as smooth as it can get, as it can get. As uh, K makes it to stage two as well, stream looking a lot better. And there's a speed printer up top right for Cap. He has three hooves. K sees it as well as debating. You ultimately do want speed on Acrid. With an ATG in hand, I mean, if there are watches, APR, or something else, maybe I would think about hesitating a little bit. Oh, I see. K wants to open up the key first. 
gonna use the wings. Really wants to find this encrusted, be uh, or not encrusted, but rusted lockbox before going in for that. Hoof printer does want to go for the hoof printer early though. Faku going for a chance find I don't think anyone else went for. Oh no, Bubby found that one. Gets a Harvester Scythe and a Elixir. I think Cap also had that, but ended up scrapping the Scythe. And the Rusted Box, by the way, 4K opens up a regen scrap. Hmm. Hopefully K is uh, a little bit ready, a little bit prepared for what, what's about to happen next. Hopefully Cheese doesn't pause in the middle of this Vagrant. Or K might lose... Uh, uh, I almost wanted to say lose brain cells, but that, that wouldn't be right. Uh, lose control, we'll just say that. Now, losing brain cells is when you have one too many drinks. I don't know why I was thinking of that. <laughs> uh, Aki, the last one to stage two, does have one death alongside K. Cap already finishing off the stage two TP. Right at 60% up in the top right. Has the hooves, has the opals, has a crowbar. Really good items to keep, even has a gasoline. Would you really benefit from having a little bit of AoE as, um, as White Acrid? There's a Tentabobble, by the way, and a Void Cradle. I don't know how I feel about Tentabobble on Acrid. Hmm. I feel like it's just eating up those Chronos. Okay, going for the uh, speed printer now. Has to be careful. There are two brass contraptions as K gets down to 48 HP, one brass, and he's dead. Right, hasn't been able to pick up the, the speed yet. It's getting harassed by wisps as well. Doesn't have any repulsion armor plate to, to handle that. And takes a death. Oh no. At two deaths now. K, who got in first place. K, who got double bonus points in the first loadout. Suddenly things are turning around, not, did not have the movement speed to be able to avoid all those enemies, opened up that Void Cradle, ultimately removing a lot of maximum HP and a lot of just just normal health in his pool, and, and it's now looking at two deaths, it's only on stage two. Cap has no deaths, did also choose to take the Tentabobble and scraps the death mark? Hmm. I don't know about scrapping death mark. I mean, accurate. If you're gonna pick up the tent tense bobble, my only thought is that you're going for some sort of death mark build, or maybe you're going for like a crowd funder setup. Oh, cap! Did cap hit blue port? I don't know, but I do know that Blubbly and K have a fire band. Blubbly at 12 deaths is going to have to get in first place as of now, in terms of real time, in order to be able to place right. 40 minute policy. If you finish up a run, anyone who's 40 minutes or slower than you has to concede. And I mean, Bubbly's at 70 minutes real time or in game time right now, uh, as opposed to Caps 11. Right, has a whole hour uh, on her shoulders, and, and just not not the most ideal of a situation. While I'm Oh, there's an AP printer on stage two, by the way. I knew there was a crit printer. I didn't know about the AP round. I wasn't paying attention to Cap for like three seconds. Or Faku, for that matter. Faku with double APR round. K with five goat hoof did not die to the Vagrant, thankfully. Had a pretty, e uh, pretty easy time. Cap, the only one without fire band, who could have greatly benefited from that with the, uh, the prey on at hand. It's now going to have to be prey onless. Does have a rusted bot or uh, encrusted? Keep wanting to say I say. What I've been trying to do is I first say rusted box. I'm like, wait, no, it's not a rusted box. That's a rusted key. But instead of saying rusted key, I just say encrusted key. I don't know what my brain's up to these days. I gotta get it checked. But while we get that checked, uh, Cat finds a harpoon, hunter's harpoon, from the stage three TP. Um, right, just trying to play the run fast. A lot of people back in the day with uh, Light Acrid used to essentially play a full looting uh, win streak style. 
until they found like a, a winning setup, a winning build, and then they would start speeding up a bit. Nowadays, things are starting to change a little bit. Now, this isn't exactly the most mobile of accurate loadouts, right? You at least want three go hopes. I think that's that's about a minimum of what you need. My personal preference is about four, four and a half speed items, uh, especially with this shift. Maybe even up that a little bit. However, uh, I'm losing my train of thought. That's not... Oh yeah, how acrid runs go. Um, you want to try in the more modern style, just powering through, get the items you can get, right? find as much damage, get that speed down, and you'll be good to go. And you got to just be really, really aggressive. You can't play like normal acrid, where you just kind of stand back and let the poison do the work, let poison do the job. You just gotta get full aggressive and be fast. And there might be a death or something in the mix, but it usually works out. And Faku makes it to stage 3. K is on stage 3. Everyone's going for a lot of green scrap. I'm assuming at some point there's gonna be a blue portal hit. I wouldn't be surprised if K looks in the back before activating TP to see if there is one. Does find it. It's going to hit it. There it is, there's a blue portal, has five green scrap. It's now going to activate the Grove Tender, which, oh man, I mean, Cap already played it really risky going for the Prey on, but Grove Tender and Acrid are really terrifying. First, uh, when I used to do Acrid speedrunning, I am the uh, former world record holder for Acrid speedruns, by the way. Thank you so much, Ruddy, for finding a head stopper on stage one. I'm totally not bitter at you, um, but... I remember Grove Tenders being the one of the most terrifying bosses. And that was with with Neurotoxin, that was with uh, Caustic Leap, right? You have a lot more mobility. And in this setup, though, I mean, you can maybe get like a couple shifts in and then you can run away if you hit a lot of enemies with the Frenzy Leap. Frenzy Leap does do a lot of damage, but hey, that Prayon's going to be nice to have. These wings are cool. They're good mobility, but... We'll see how some of them do on the TP. Uh, if it were a Doom Strider, if it were Imp Overlord, I would feel a lot more confident. Bandolier, by the way, the second item for the uh, the Rusted Key. If Cap finds his Rusted Box, he will get that. As we all know, items within boxes, right? The rusted Boxes and Crusted Boxes, it's all seeded by stage. Or by number of stages. Oh, poor Blubbly. Hang on there. Blubbly hasn't died in a while. Gotta hand it to him. They are really starting to... So I say step it up. Ah, oh, it does take a death. It's the first one in a while. Let's recover in a bit, right? Baku, by the way, has a DML. Did not die from that Grove Tender. Played it pretty well. Played it, played it really quick. We'll see how Kay handles the Grove Tender. Again, that chain's really scary, especially with the wings. Just kind of playing the, uh, the M1 cycle. Getting some health back really quick. Takes a lot of shots. Oh, Kay does have a Gasoline. Okay. Yeah, the gasoline's gonna make it a lot easier. If you have gas, you can go all in on the Grove Tender. Without the gas, though, those wisps don't die, and you just kind of get pummeled by them. So that's good. Okay, able to finish off the Grove Tender. Does have a blue portal open. None of the other racers have gone in a blue portal yet. I'm surprised Cap has it with the, the five suit. Oh, it does have a blue orb this stage. Okay. It's gonna get a opportunity, get a chance to maybe find something good. And it says, how many bad greens? Question mark. Well, let's see. Already scrapped four, has a regen scrap, has two harvester scythes, an old guillotine, a bandolier, a leeching seed, and a harpoon. I mean, can I just say literally every single green except for your for your ATG, except for your, your band? <laughs> These greens are not good. Kate makes a good point. 
I guess like the the harpoon or not the harpoon, the harvest of scythe and the uh, predatory instincts. That's ten percent crit right there. Maybe the bandolier gets you more shift usages, so you can kill more enemies more fast or move around more. Eh. That's a reach. I mean, Cap is done, though. I mean, despite all the bad grades, right? With just those three APR rounds, able to kill some bosses, is taking a lot of curse. But a nice thing about Acrid. Ooh, actually, if I was Cap right now? Right, to get a Neural from the Stage 4 TP. Oh, that's an overloading one. Mushroom uh, explosions, right? The, the mushroom guts are a good source of pennies. You can kind of farm them up a little bit. Oh, no, that's a loss of watch. Almost dies. Okay, maybe not so much on the penny stuff. Cap just needs to survive. Don't want to lose that 10 minute advantage you have on K. The current per person uh, poised to win the race with five points. And gets a needle tick. Has two needle tick now. Not terrible, especially on Akron who has the highest base damage out of every survivor in the game. Now it's not that big of an improvement, but it's something. Whose build do I like the most right now? Spaku makes it to stage 4, still having to do a whole stage? Hmm. Oh, poor Blubbly takes another death from the, the Templar. I I like Faku's build a lot. Still has the watch, has double fire band, has a DML, maybe not a Preon. But K has an ICBM. And we'll see if K, uh, if Cap, not K. Goes for the blue pool. Personally, I would do it. I have to have the scrap. Yes, he is. And there's a behemoth. Hello. Where was that from? Was that was that the legendary chest? I don't think Cap looted that much. And has a red item. Cap is gonna have a brilliant behemoth. It's gonna have an ATG. And here's gonna come the ICBM. Of course, you're gonna take that. Yes, sir. You don't take two though. Yeah, only five other green items. It would be cool if you had, like, another five scrap you just, like, went all in and prayed for something cool. I mean, it's a really not good idea to do, but it would be cool to get double broth or uh, double ICBM with that ATG. Faku frames, GG. Well, we always know about Faku frames. Oh, poor, poor Blubbly. Right, went for the aggressive play style that some of the other racers had. Didn't have the, uh, the, the gasoline, though, which really hurts that, um that strategy and now just taking a bunch of shots from these these beetle guards takes a, another death from from fall damage right is using frenzied leap has a 10 second cooldown uh more often than not you end up just bouncing off and plummeting to your ground and then because you oh, oh here's maybe another one tries to jump back and yep that's gonna be a death i mean blubbly's just in a death loop right now and it's not a really like necessary death loop, right? It's not like an oh man, there's literally nothing I can do death loop. It's just a death loop of tilt. Right? You died 13 times on stage 1. Had some frame rate issues in the first loadout or in the second loadout after the the whole DNF issue. Cat plan kind of risky with that gup. Does use the uh, the shift to be able to provide a stun. Trying to figure out how to kill that gup. It's going to have to eventually have it die. Otherwise, he won't be able to uh, leave the stage. Gets a needle tick hit. Good thing is, Gup don't do that much damage. Uh, outside of base damage, right? And boom, that's a kill. Oh, man. Oh, that's a lot of mushroom for, uh, for Faku. Faku, who does not have a blue portal, will not be able to get the ICBM that the other racers had. And K... How did K die? Was that a larva death? Or was that a, a mushroom death? K with now with three plus fives, despite having the ICBM, despite having an ATG, despite having really good speed, a really good acrid run overall, just kind of tilted at this point. Taking a lot of deaths. Oh man. And I mean, maybe might be able to get something from these these chance shrines. Gets a red. Gets the beh Okay, so it's from the chance trying to get the behemoth. Baku opting for the healing item over the wings. Oh wait, no. I thought he had the 
the uh, the healing equipment. I guess went back for the DML ultimately. The DML that none of the other racers have. Oh, it's so sad for 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 poor Baku here. Has a DML but doesn't have the ICBM that the other two racers have. That would have been really good for phase four or uh, phase two. Oh man. Uh, I don't even know how how Bloodly died that time. Now at 19 deaths, we'll have to finish before anyone else to have any shot at getting a, a placement. Okay, now on the TP fight. Borderline uh, on par with Maku here. Also in the fight. Dealing with this grandparent. Oh, look at that damage. Look at all, all of that. I mean, was that the ATGs? What, what is dealing so much damage to this grandparent? We'll just blame it on the Blight. Was it the Needle Tick from the enemies? Was it just a double fire band? With a normal slam? Who knows? I'm sure actually a lot of you guys know. I just, I don't. <laughs> Maybe it's just a mixture of everything. We'll say that. And Cap is on to the moon. Now let's look at Cap's loadout. Only one ATG. I don't think there's any others found throughout the run. Lost the watch on, on stage four. Did not die though. All right, K, who ended up dying on stage four. Uh, Blubbly, who had a really bad stage one. Started coming back on stage two. Ended up losing a lot more on stage three. And, and now is just trying to rush to completion. We'll see. I mean, Cap's on the moon. And, I, I mean, Bloodly's not going to have any chance of getting that ICBM. I don't know. I don't think that's going to be even even remotely possible for Bloodly to catch up. To be able to finish in real time. I mean, Cap's just got such a good build. Triple APR. Triple Hoof. Has a Behemoth with an ICBM. I think Cap's been practicing uh, host skip a decent amount. Now you can kind of launch yourself here. Okay, it's going for this route. Oh, the launching I think is is, uh, is multi. Oh, jeez, on my end. Let's try and. Uh, Save as much time with the shifts, right? Only get one shift every 10 seconds. So he's a Renaud's band. Oh, do you go for that? If you're a cap, do you go for Renaud's? You just failed your host skip. You have a prey on accumulator? Hmm. I don't know. But I do know that K took a fourth death. What? When did that happen? Oh, another needle tick. Oh, almost dies a fifth time. Oh, man. I mean, K just has such an identical build to, to Cap aside from the Preon. And despite that, right, despite being on the same stage, Cap's really going to have to mess up. We could easily see a bonus round here. A tiebreaker round. Maybe not, though. If Faku continues to play the way he's playing, right, only has one death. It's done with the TP. It could just be a GG and Cap could win if Cap comes back in this Blight loadout. Lovely has more deaths than than there are letters in the English alphabet. Standing strong at, at 27. Cap lost an APR? For that Renaud's band. What else did he lose? Cap, you're in chat. What, what did you lose there? I'm sure you're, you're very focused on your screen as you're doing really, really good on, on the uh, pillar skip. Don't remember? Oh, okay. <laughs> Damn. Faku's coming, though. And don't count Faku out of this, either. Oh, actually. Thank you so much, Goji, by the way. We finally got the, the Goji 401 swags as, as, as stream... Streamlabs finally kicks in. I do appreciate it. Um, it, 
it's not over for K. And the reason why is because Faku is K's champion right now. It, K's win can all but lie in the hands of Faku, who only had one death. As K is now also struggling with the, the host skip. Host skip is pretty annoying to do on Acrid. I almost feel like the multi skip's easier. For that variant. K is now going to make it up, and Faku and K and Cap all about to start the Mythrix fight all at the same time. Cap, however, tries to go for a fancy prey on and ends up missing it. Will now be prey onless. Right, that's something you really got to practice down. I don't know if a drone, like, dodged or something. Um, you almost want to try and wait for the uh, the first landing from Mythrix. Or right before Mythrix gets down to 75% HP, you just kind of time that out. And you could land a prey on that way. Good news for Cap, though. Easy bring, uh, band procs off of the uh, Frenzied Leap. But personally, I would have preferred to have Caustic Leap. Because at least that one, your caustic lead doesn't proc bands, but the ATGs that come out of it do. So you can have like even more band value that way. Hmm. Cap also uh, one without a a fire band will have to do phase four. As Faku, I mean, hmm. I'm pretty sure in order for there to be a tiebreaker round, Faku is going to have to die. So Cap needs Faku to die, K needs Faku to live, and Faku, well, Faku just wants to do what's best for Faku. Which right now is being super aggressive, playing with the items he got, right, only at about half an hour real time. Obliterating the phase one Mithrax, right? Going a, just a, a hair faster than, than K? Right? All three racers about going at the same speed. Which is kind of crazy because, I mean, I guess he's going about as fast as K because he kept his watch, right? Faku, the only one with watches, also has a double fire band. Right, Faku, the one without pocket ICBM. Lovely, just really trying to, to finish the completion. Now has more deaths than than there are days in, in the month of June. And... Hmm. Cap is trying to save the Preon. Right, almost done with Phase 2. But you can, can use uh, a Preon. Right, maybe get some ATG missiles to come out. Uh, from the little tendrils and stuff. Wouldn't probably get many, actually. Is the furthest ahead in real time. Okay. All three races. Okay, you know what I mean. Poor Blubbly's just having a blast or maybe not so much a blast having a ball with that elder having a ball with that that parent trying to finish before the other racers finish which it can be a legit strategy at times unfortunately for bloodly there's just oh oh cap just died and now of all racers i mean this isn't over yet if K, I mean, K is currently projected to get in third place here. If K gets in third place, K only goes up to, to, to six points. Cap could have gotten the tiebreaker round with just one bonus point, which could have easily been done had Cap gotten the fastest real time. But now Faku, with only one death. I mean, if a little bit more happens to, to, to Cap, right? Cap just landed on a, on a med drone. It's going to have to use Bite or maybe a third hit of the M1 to be able to land without losing opals, takes six curse. Now has to deal with Mythrix running around rapidly. The not the pre-pizza Mythrix of phase three. One of the most terrifying parts of the fight. Faku though, really low in health if Faku ends up dying. And suddenly Cap is back in and, and, and Oh! There it is! 
And now Cap is back into, into consideration for this race to be able to get bonus points, as K is now just beginning Phase 3. Cap needs to get one bonus point and needs to have Faku get in second place. Oh man, I mean, you have to get in there if you're Cap. You have to get in there if you're if you're K or, or Faku. You have to just run as fast as you can and maybe try and find a god item if you're Blubbly. Okay, oh, takes another death. Is really just just charging through. Now at five deaths. Mythric's fight just going really slow, takes a slam high. It will have another shift to be able to land. Tries to land on Mythrix, misses it. You only get one of those every 10 seconds. Cap now and the point of pizza. There's gonna be a lot of deaths here, I just realized. I mean, no feather. You do have a little bit of movement speed, you do have some opals. But I mean, Faku at two deaths, Cap K at five. Cap uh, almost died from those ads, trying to, to land maybe a lucky ICBM off of, of Preon. Those get a pretty decent hit on Mythrix, though. Almost takes a pizza. And... I mean... Hmm. How do you play this aggressive without dying? It's tough because those ads are slowly going to whittle you away. You can use your regen if you... Oh my god. As K takes a sixth death in this Mythrix fight. Only has one armor piercing round, I just realized. And that's just going to be such a big difference compared to Cap's two. But Cap has a, uh, a ice band with the prey on. Baku, the fastest one in terms of real time, has four and just makes such a big difference, right? Plus 80%. And now Faku with Cap dying. Oh my god. I mean, Faku, if Cap dies again, and Cap's down to 300 health, and Cap has to deal with more pizza. Kay's essentially out of the, of, of the race at this point, being four deaths behind, still half a Mythrix fight to go. It's looking pretty secured for third place, if not a DNF. Let's see, I mean, nah, that's far out of DNF contention. Still another four deaths to ha need to happen for K. And Faku has to do phase four, but K I mean, Cap really needs to catch up. Faku also six seconds uh, ahead of everyone else in real time. On the clock. His game freezes when Mythrix is phase four. Suddenly did not die. Okay. Got the ATG back. K's almost dead. Has six deaths. Still. There's the fire ban for Faku. And oh my god, almost gets hit. Almost lands on an orb, but it's gonna be okay. Here comes a DML. And that's gonna do it for Faku. As K takes his seventh death. Really just rushing down Metrix at this point. And Cap enters phase four as well. Now, it's not over yet. While it's looking like Cap's gonna end up in second place, as Faku pulls ahead. Faku, one who a lot of us, I mean, I personally forgot a lot about Faku throughout this loadout race. Faku did not have the, uh, the, the pocket ICBM. Faku just played it fast, had more armor piercing rounds than anyone else, had a DML. Lovely is doing pillars. And, I mean, oh, Cap takes another death. Which is perfect for what K, or not K, but for what Faku needed. We'll likely get a bonus point. I think we'll get a bonus point, unless unless Faku grubs this. It's just such a wreck of a race is, is going on before our very eyes. Faku, I mean, 40, 57 minutes. Nah, there's only going to be one bonus point for Faku. And despite the strong victory that Faku's going to have, 
It's not going to be enough. Because K is going to be able to finish in third place. End up at six points. Cap is going to end up with four. Oh, actually. Yeah, Cap only gets two points for this. So Faku's actually going to come in second. What a run, what a play. 47-23, the final time. And 47-29, 52... I think that's a 23. 52-23, final time. Oh wait, no. Uh, 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 that's single single bonus. Fifty two twenty three. My bad. My bad. My bad. Fifty seven twenty three. There we go. I could read. And with that time coming up for Faku, uh, we're gonna see. Oh, uh, I think Cheese is actually just gonna let uh, Bubbly play it out since we just have two people on the ship. As Cap finishes up. Cap is going to come in at, oh, we'll see, 53-26. So double bonus is denied. Aku does get one bonus point, though. And K is going to finish off as well. So we'll add up the points here, but Cap coming in at the 53-26 gets two points. Aku getting the four points and getting the one bonus. And K ending up with the one point for coming in third. What a close race. That went all over the place. Um, wow. At 7836, finishes off. And Lovely is at 37 deaths. Went for a lot of mochas. Is definitely getting damage in. I mean, if everyone else played it kind of slow and stuff, well, we could have been able to get a, a fourth place uh, finish up at the very least. But unfortunately, with Maku finishing up, um, the time to complete being at 87.23, is going to be unable to finish and will have to concede. GG Bubbly. And GG to everyone else. I think it's the, the closest in terms of points that we've seen yet. Wow.